What are you thinking about? You gotta be alert. How many thought I retired? <laughs> Hello, I'm Mike Moore, and welcome to the How to Win podcast. These podcasts are based off 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, Now thanks be unto God who always, always, always causes us to triumph in Christ. Listen, this is How to Win. This podcast was created to help you and assist you in winning in life. And come on, say, we always win. Come on, say it. We always win. Make it personal. I always win. Now, this is my Just a Thought edition of How to Win. Now, this edition, I have different editions of How to Win, uh, but this edition will be coming to a close in a, a few sessions. We got we got another session to go, and then I'm gonna transition in my Answers That Work broadcast. We normally begin airing this podcast on Tuesday night, uh, uh, on Tuesdays at 12 noon, pardon me, Tuesdays at 12 noon, but Thursdays, at seven, we offer just a thought, but we're going to transition to Answers That Work broadcast on Thursdays at noon, so we're going to be transitioning out of just a thought, but we're going to do it on Instagram, do some things on Instagram and YouTube, so listen, got a couple of more thoughts I'd like to share with you, I'm ready for our thought today, it's going to be good, it's going to be good, listen, it's not the pressures of life that defeat people. External pressure only reveals inner qualities that are either present or absent in a person's life. Now, this is profound. I'm talking about, I've got to read this to you again because this is, this is, this heavy stuff right here. It is not the pressures of life that defeat people. External pressure only reveals the inner qualities that are either present or absent in a person's life. So remember that. All of us experience pressure. All of us. All of us. All of us. I don't care who you are, saved, unsaved. I don't care who you are, spiritual believer, babe in Christ. We all experience pressure in life. But it's not the pressure in life that defeat us. Remember that. All the pressure does is reveals the inner qualities that are either present or absent in our life. For example, I'll give you a couple of examples of this thought. Take a balloon. I used this illustration in my ch- local church for years. Take an il- uh, illustration. Have a balloon. A balloon is on my hand. You got to use your imagination. A balloon is on my hand. And I take a pin and prick the balloon. What's going to come out of the balloon? Well, air going to come out of the balloon. You agree? Let's say we take the same balloon and we fill it with water. And then we prick with a pin the balloon. What's going to come out of the balloon? Water. Let's say we put, I almost said Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid was our drink of of choice, or maybe it wasn't a choice when I was growing up. Kool-Aid was big, okay, you know, Kool-Aid. But let's say we put a soda, grape soda, in the balloon, and then we prick the balloon with a pen. What's going to come out? Grape soda. If we put sweet tea in the balloon, take a pen and prick the balloon, what's going to come out of the balloon? Sweet tea. Because the prick, the pressure, does not create what's in the balloon. 
the prick only reveals or releases what's on the inside of the balloon. And that's what pressure does. It doesn't, it doesn't instill qualities in us. Some people say, well, the pressure will make you better. No, 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 no. Pressure will destroy you if you don't respond to it properly. Pressure reveals what's on the inside. Give you another illustration. You're nailing a piece of wood. You got the nail and you're nailing the nail into this piece of wood. You miss the nail and hit your thumb. And all this curse words, profanity flows out of your mouth. Well, the hammer hitting your finger didn't cause the curse words to be in you. No, the pressure only released what was already on the inside of you. See, those curse words were in you. The profanity, all those four-letter words that you, you spoke after you hit your finger with the hammer came out as a result of the pressure. But it was not the pressure of the hammer hitting your finger that caused the curse words to be in you. The curse words were already on the inside of you and the pressure release was on the inside of us. I think that's a good illustration. So let's look at our thought. It is not the pressures of life that defeat people. External pressure only reveals the inner qualities that are either present or absent in a person's life. Let me give you a biblical uh, illustration of the thought. Jesus told parables in his teaching, and there was a parable that uh, he taught and shared. In Matthew 7, it's also recorded in Luke chapter 6. It's the parable of the builders the parable of the builders, the two builders. It says one builder built his house by digging deep and laying the foundation on a rock. And then the parable says that the rain descended and the flood came and the wind beat upon that house, but it could not shake it because it was founded upon a rock. Another man built his house by building his house on the sand, a sand foundation. And the scripture says the rain descended, the floods came, and the wind beat upon that house, and immediately it fell. Well, think about it. It was not the storm that was the major problem. It was a problem, but the storm did not determine whether or not the house would stand or fall. One man decided to build a foundation dug deep, laid the foundation on the rock. So now, this work of building this foundation was hard work. Okay, it was hard work. It was expensive work because the deeper he went, the more it cost to build this house. It was time-consuming work, hard, costly, time-consuming. But another guy decided, well, you know, I don't need to go through all that. I don't need to go through that. I just build my house on the sand. So his foundation was easy. It's easy to pour sand out. It was cheap. Sand didn't cost that much, and it was faster. But the storm hit that house, and immediately it fell. 
So it was not the exterior of the house. It was not the beauty of the house. It was the inner foundation or the lack of foundation in the house that determined whether the house stood or fell. Some people, they take the time to build inequalities in their life and, and build good habits in their life and build the word in their life. And it's hard. It's hard work to build the word in your life. It, it's hard work to take, and it's time consuming, and, and it costs you something because when you build the word in you, it takes uh, away time for doing other things. I mean, think about it. I, I, I built the word in my life, but it, man, it was hard to, it was hard work, you know, staying up at night, spending time in that word, walking the floor, confessing that word. Think about it. It, it cost me something. And then think about it. It was time consuming. It took a while to build the word in my life. Well, I could have took a different route. I could have said, I don't have to go through all that. I could just pull me a little verse out of uh, a little box right there. I, I got a verse right here. Read me two or three little verses every day, you know. Don't take but a few minutes. Read me a few verses every now and then. May look at a sermon every now and then. I know the past, that was a good message. I may look at it sometime, go to church every now and then, you know, sometime. So I'm, I'm, I'm really taking the easy route. I think about it. It's no, it's no sacrifice to that. It's no time consuming in that. There's no pulling away from television to get the word in me. No getting off social media sometime to get the word. And I don't have to do all that. It don't take all that. It just doesn't take all that. And then when the storms of life come, the rain descend and the flood come and the wind blew, blow against your house because that's adversity. When adversity come, if you took the easy route, it's going to be an impact on your life. You take the, the you take the hard route, difficult route, got to work, got to dig deep, got to spend time in it, going to cost you something. Then when the challenges come, you'll be able to handle it. You'll be able to face it. It is not the pressures of life that defeat people because if, pressure defeated people it would defeat everybody so why is it some people i've seen i've seen over my year pastor i've seen people raised up in the same household and some people in some some of the children in the household win and some fail it has nothing to do with the pressure because they experience the same pressure the same death the same challenges why did that one person win and another person lose and they're experiencing the same kind of challenges? Because it's not the pressure that defeats us. It is really the pressure revealing what's on the inside of us. If we put nothing in us, then nothing is going to come out. We spend no time in the Word, no time confessing the Word, no time giving. Nothing is going to come out. It's not going to come out. You could prick it, but it's not going to come out. And sometimes we get jealous and upset at certain people that may be winning because we're in the same church. In the same church. Why that person winning and I'm not winning? Well... Let me, let me give you another illustration. You tell me. Joseph was tempted by a woman, a beautiful woman. Oh, listen, Potiphar didn't marry an ugly woman. He, he, she was gorgeous. Potiphar's wife was gorgeous. She tried to seduce Joseph. Joseph resisted the temptation to the point of running out of He ran from it. Well, David was a servant of God. He came out on the house 
Saw watching HBO, saw a woman bathing. She was naked. He called a woman to him. He's the king, called a woman to him. Slept with the woman. The woman got pregnant. After he got pregnant, she, he called her husband in from the army. Wanted him to go home and sleep with his wife so that the husband would think it was his baby. The man wouldn't go home. He had integrity. So David put that man on the front line, had him killed, and took his wife and married her. Well, David, well, I mean, they both were tempted. Why did Joseph oh, overcome the temptation? Why did David succumb to it? It was not the pressure of the temptation because temptation came to both. It was the pressure of the temptation only revealed what was on the inside of him. And so when Joseph was tempted, Joseph said, listen, girl, I can't mess with you. You, you belong to that man. Joseph knew what the word, listen, you belong to that man. You don't belong to me. I'm not going to sleep with you. But then he said, I can't sin against God. If I do that, I will be sinning to God. She said, well, no, you, you, nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to know. Joseph said, yeah, he knows because he can see everything. Listen, this boy had a relationship with God. He was just a teenager. He wasn't young, old, but he had a relationship with God. It was the inner work that he had done. David drifted away from God. He started off, but he drifted away from God. So now he has nothing on the inside of him. Now listen to me. When an engineer says that the building has structural integrity, the engineer is not talking about how beautiful the building, how tall the building is, the grandeur of the building. That engineer is talking about the foundation that run deep in the ground. That, that engineer is talking about those steel, steel beams that reinforce the building. He's saying it's the hidden part of the building that determines whether they have structural in integrity. It's not what you do in public. It's what you do in private. If you do nothing about your spiritual life in private, it's going to manifest. Listen at this. As I close this thought, what you do or don't do in your private world is going to one day manifest in your public world. That is a fact. Anytime you see scandal, anytime you see this, you see these folk and you see this happening, it's what was happening in their private world is now just manifesting in public. That's all it is. And that's all it is anytime. What you do or don't do in your private life will eventually manifest in your public life. And remember, it is not the pressure of life that defeats you. What defeats you is what's in you or not in you because all the pressure does is reveal what's on the inside of you. How you function privately will determine your public success. If you do nothing private, one day folk going to know what you did because it's going to manifest in your private life. This is just a thought. And I'll say it as I close. It is not the pressures of life that defeat people. External pressure only reveals the inequalities that are either present or absent in a person's life. Now, listen, I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want you to share this. And remember, just a thought is coming to a close. This edition of How to Win will be coming to a close. We're going to be bringing to Thursday Answers That Work broadcast with Mike Moore. So it's going to be me. It's just going to be a, a different platform. Listen, I love you. I got to go. And I look forward to seeing you next time. What are you thinking about? You got to be alert. I mean, I thought I retired. <laughs> 
Are you ready to break free from the chains of anxiety, stress, and depression? Mike Moore, author and founding pastor of Faith Chapel and host of the How to Win podcast, is here with his new book, Help, My Mind is Under Attack. Learn how to overcome attacks on your mind and live an emotionally healthy life. Grab your copy now. Available as ebook on Amazon and paperback on MikeMoore.com. Embark on your journey to complete mental health and emotional peace.